Okay guys, today we're going to be doing my review, I'm going to be doing my review on the Mora Bushcraft Black. Now, I'm far from the first person to own this knife and far from the first person to talk about this knife. And to clarify, if you guys are have been around the channel uh, for a little while, you'll know that my initial impressions of the Bushcraft Black were not that favorable. And admittedly, there are still some downsides that I'm not completely in love with about this little guy. But I will say, like a good Mora, it is growing on me and making me a little bit more pleased by the day as I continue to use it and continue to get a little bit more familiar with it. So let's jump into this knife. Let's jump into the ergonomics and talk about my experiences with this knife. So, of course, like I said, this is the Mora Bushcraft Black, and this knife, so far for me, has actually been pretty good. Now, in the beginning, I was not a huge fan of this blade. So, in the beginning, I was not a huge fan of this blade, and that was primarily due to the fact that while the ergonomics felt pretty good in my hand, it just wasn't quite lining up and it wasn't feeling quite right. Now, like I said, I've gotten a little bit more use, and I have played around with this thing a little bit more on wood, but uh, one of the problems that came from that kind of ergonomic issue was the fact that batoning was very painful and it still kind of is unless you know how to hold the knife just right but uh, the handle what was happening was there was a tremendous amount of hand shock uh, every time you would baton the blade and while I don't baton every single time I'm out and I don't put a huge emphasis on batoning it is something that I like to do and you know it can give you access to the middle or core of wood like this very easily and it can help you if you want to craft and you know make different things especially things like hearth boards for bow drills and all that fun jazz so the fact that this knife had a very strong hand shock was really off-putting to me and was really kind of a shame because up until that point for the most part i was really liking it now like i said in getting back to using this blade more I am enjoying it pretty well. I don't have too many complaints. I have taken this knife out and really put it through its paces. That first kind of experience left a bitter taste in my mouth, but uh, here of late, I just took it out. You know, I've gutted uh, grouse with this. I've cut them up, you know, like uh, sectioned them up for meat, and I've done all kinds of things with this particular knife. And I have to say that after using it in a wide variety of roles, from truly bushcrafting and you know carving, crafting stuff like that, to hunting and more fieldcraft type of uh, use, this blade is a pretty good all-arounder. Now, I don't think that I would consider this a survival knife. And luckily, Mora says, or the name of this knife is the Bushcraft Black. So it's not really being sold as a true to form or you know really uh, oriented survival knife per se and I'll get back to that in a reason of why I don't or I'll get back to that in a little bit why I don't think it's a good survival knife but ultimately for being a good general purpose knife I have to say that this does an okay job uh, it's probably a good job of being an all-arounder. Now, in my initial video uh, where I was comparing this to the SRK, I talked about how the SRK was a little bit better, or how I talked about how this blade was a little thick and a little bit meaty behind the edge, and I did con I did continue to have that issue or run into that kind of problem when, you know, like cutting up meat or like trying to cut meat off of an animal uh, that you've harvested, you know, this blade is definitely a little bit on the thicker side, uh, especially for small game processing. However, it does get it done and like I've said in the past video, um, you know, it's a thick blade, but it is still very sharp, so you can still get a lot of work done with it. You know, it will cut just fine, but you have to put a little bit more pressure and you have to be a little bit more mindful of what you're doing. Uh, it's not like a hot knife through butter. It's more like a knife through kind of cold butter, if you will. Um, you know, there takes some force, it takes some energy, and it takes some, you know, thought to doing it. So. You know, it's not the cleanest cutter, but at the same time, the blade does perform pretty well in an all-around task. And I, like I said, being that this knife had initially kind of turned me off, 
I really wanted to come back to it and just run it through a gambit of different things. Like I said, you know, not just bushcrafting tasks, but fieldcraft tasks, and really make an honest attempt to like this knife and make an honest attempt to use it to, you know, really bring honest opinion and, you know, see what this knife is all about. So overall, I would say that, you know, this blade is a pretty good all-arounder, and for under $40, would I recommend it? I probably would now. In the beginning, I was definitely like, no, I wouldn't recommend this knife. But, uh, you know, for the price point, if you're looking for a smaller all around bush knife, it gets the job done very well. One thing I will say I definitely love is how sharp the spine is on this knife. If you'll notice uh, in this video and in some of my personal experience, uh, this thing just, when you go to strip bark, with the back of this blade, it does it very well, which is actually surprising because not too many knives uh, do it particularly well. Like most knives that have sharpened spines will strip bark with the spine, but this knife, I mean, it just does it extremely well. And uh, so much so that it really is more effective than using the cutting edge to like strip the bark and cambium layer off of things like birch trees or uh, spruce trees or aspen. So. Uh, that is definitely a huge pro. The edge is pretty good. Uh, it is very sharp out of box. Once again, like I said in previous videos, I do feel like they could have taken the Scandi grind up a little bit higher or that they should have taken it up a little bit higher just due to the fact of the thickness of this blade. It's around an eighth inch thick. So this is a pretty serious, pretty beefy blade and uh, they really haven't taken the Scandi grind up as high as I would have liked it and that's part of what leads it to that clunky kind of um, really thick blade behind the edge feeling when you're trying to do any cutting at all and like I said it becomes really noticeable when you try to do things like notches or when you're trying to process game animals uh, you really feel that thick thick blade behind the edge and once again the blade is sharp enough that it still cuts just fine but you have to put more effort and more exertion into getting that edge to work and that's unfortunately kind of the pro and the con to a scandinavian grind is if a scandinavian grind is very high and the edge is very uh, thin then it will cut really really well but if the grind is lower and you know there's a significant amount of steel behind that cutting edge you'll find that it cuts like a wedge and so not at all good so anyways uh, <clears throat> like I said this knife for survival is a little small I don't think I would recommend it for that application especially here in Alaska when you're looking for a survival knife you're looking for something that's a minimum of six inches this blade is around four and a half and that's not a bad size it's just a little bit too small but for being an all-around bush knife, if you're looking for something that can do fieldcraft, bushcraft, and light survival tasks, uh, this is a really good option. And the thing that I like the most about this blade is uh, the price point. It comes in at a very reasonable price point. You're getting a good steel. It's basically $10.95, but it's the Swedish alternative or maybe the European alternative C100 and the DLC coating is very good. It's held up well to all the abuse I've put on it, whether it's batoning, whether it's putting it into a fire, you know, to move stuff around. Um, just the different things that I've done with it. The DLC coating is holding up very well and I have no issues with that. And I think the DLC coating is fairly important, once again, being that this is, you know, uh, carbon steel C100 is, once again, basically like 1095, so it will rust very easily. But uh, it seems to be holding up, like I said, very well. The only place where the DLC coating is starting to come off is on the spine where I'm doing a lot of striking of ferro rods and, you know, stripping bark and, of course, the cutting edge. So those are obviously the highest um, use points on the blade. But other than that, you know, the actual sides of the blade are holding up very well with the coating. Uh, the handle does take some getting used to. It is a little bit different in ergonomics, but overall it feels really good. And being that this is a rubberized grip, it has plenty of traction. 
As far as the durability goes, once again, everything I've subjected this thing to, it has done just fine. There's no like wobble. Of course, this is a rat tail tang, so it does not protrude out the back and it ends somewhere right around here. Um, but at the same time, you know, I've used plenty of Moras that are not full tang. And honestly, I actually prefer Moras that are not full tang just because these knives are such high quality that you're not likely going to break them even doing things like batoning. And it's honestly just a weight savings. You know, you don't really need the full tang and you get a lighter weight knife. And once again, when we look at the edge length on this, or blade length, sorry, uh, you know, you're not gonna be batoning down a 12 inch, you know, spruce tree with this knife. You know, this is a four, four and a half inch blade. You know, you're gonna do some light batoning at best. This is not a huge knife. So I don't think it needs to be industrial. And I think the good thing about the Bushcraft Black is that they haven't made this knife more industrial than it needs to be. So it kind of has a good weight savings for that. Overall, the blade has some definite shortcomings and I would say for a knife under $40, that's honestly to be expected. But for what it does and for an all-arounder purpose, I think this knife fits the bill very well. It's not necessarily a master of any one particular thing, but it is kind of a jack of all trades. And if that's the kind of blade you're looking for, the Bushcraft Black is definitely worth looking at. It's been around for quite some time in the uh, Amora Knife lineup. So it definitely is proven and enough people like it to keep it around. So that is my ultimate opinion on the Bushcraft Black. It is a pretty nice blade. And like I said, in fairness, uh, my initial impressions were not very good on this blade, but the more I use it, the more I come to like it and the more I, you know, have an understanding of this blade is more what I would say than anything. It's, I understand this blade even if I don't always like it. Um, it has a purpose and it is pretty good for what it is. And once again, factoring in the price point, you know, it's not too shabby. And uh, honestly, it's a lot like what I would consider a budget version of the Mora Garberg. Though the Mora Garberg has a little bit, in my opinion, better ergonomics just because it has more of a homogenous handle design. Uh, but aside from that, the uh, Mora Bushcraft Black is not too bad. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been informative. And as always, God bless, and I'm out.